بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته brothers um, so we reached um, this lesson here in the book of uh, شرح الأصول الثلاثة his explanation of the three fundamental principles of Sheikh Mubuddin Abdul Wahab explained by uh, Sheikh Saleh Fawzan and um, as you can see we reached this topic here and this is where we stopped so we'll continue from uh, where we left off so the Sheikh uh, is, uh, he, he entitles this um, uh, this section of the book A'adhamu ma amarallahu bihi at and essentially meaning that the, the greatest thing that Allah has commanded is Tawheed. Essentially Allah has commanded us with Tawheed. That's the greatest thing that He has commanded His creation with. At Tawheed. Uh, and the Shaykh then continues and he says وَعَظَمُوا مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ التوحيد وَهُوَ إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْإِبَادَةِ So then the Shaykh explains that a little bit. So he says, he repeats the same thing and he says, so the greatest thing that Allah commanded commanded his creation with is a tawheed and he says it is singling out Allah with all worship all forms of worship are for Allah alone as we discussed last week if you remember and so this is the meaning of tawheed, tawheed and uh, the shaykh will explain it further as we go through this lesson today inshallah so it won't be a long lesson this is a fairly short lesson We'll try and add some extra benefits if we can, inshallah. So the Shaykh continues and he says, Qawluhu rahimahullah, A'adhamu ma amara Allah bihi at-tawheed, Hada muhimun jiddan, Inna at-tawheed a'adhamu ma amara Allah bihi, Kullu al-awamir allati amara Allah bihi, Kullu ha ba'da at-tawheed. So then the Shaykh, he says, So the greatest thing that we know now, that the greatest thing that Allah commanded is Tawheed. He commanded a Tawheed. And he says it's very important, very, very important. And he says, verily, Tawheed, it's the greatest thing that Allah commanded. And he says, every commandment which Allah commanded comes after a Tawheed. So the first thing, essentially, we're just uh, um, emphasizing here, that At-Tawheed is the first, very first commandment. And we'll see the evidences, inshallah. But the Shaykh continues into the next paragraph and he says, Ad-Dalilu ala anna a'zama ma amar Allah bihi At-Tawheedu qawluhu ta'ala wa'abudu Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'a ila akhir al-aya. And um, so the Shaykh says, and the evidence for what we've just said is the ayah that we've just read. Wa'abudu Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'a. And to the end of the ayah. Um, and so if we go to Surah An-Nisa, because this is ayah quoted from Surah An-Nisa, let's go there. Verse 36. Well, let's read at the beginning. Worship Allah and join none with Him in worship and do good to parents towards the end. But we're going to read this all out. I'll read it now, but the Shaykh is going to break it down later on. So we may as well read it now. Worship Allah and join none with Him in worship and do good to parents, kinsfolk, orphans, al maskeen the poor. The neighbor who is near of kin, the neighbor who is a stranger, the companion by your side, the wayfarer you meet, and those slaves whom your right hand possesses, verily Allah does not like such as are proud and boastful. The Sheikh is going to explain that. We'll go through the tafsir of that for us, inshallah, shortly. So let's continue. Hadi al ayatun fiha ashara fiha ashara tuhukukin. 
ولهذا تسمى آية الحقوق العشرة أول هذه الحقوق حق الله سبحانه وتعالى وعبد الله ولا تشرك به شيئا وبالوالدين إحسانا هذا هو الحق الثاني وبذ القربة هذا هو الحق الثالث وذب القربة هم الذين تجمع بهم قرابة نسبية من جهة الأبي أو الأم كالآباء والأجداد والأمام والعمات والأخوال والخالات والإخوة والأخوات وأولاد الإخ... آ... آ... الإخوة والأخوات والأولاد الأعمام والعم... والعمات هؤلاء هم ذو القربة لهم حق القرابة واليتامى الأيتام من المسلمين وهم كل من مات أبوه وهو صغير ولم يبلغ وصار بحاجة إلى من يسد مسد أبيه في رعاية رعاية هذا رعاية هذا الطفل تربية تربية وإنفاقا وقياما وبمصالحه ورفع ما يضره لأنه ليس له أب يحميه وينفق عليه ويضاعف عنه فهو بحاجة إلى من يساعده لأنه فقد أباه وفقد أباه أو فقد أباه وعائله وله حق في الإسلام So let's go through that uh, rather large paragraph So the Shaykh continues and says So he says this ayah that we read He says the whole ayah that we just read the translation of in Surah An-Nisa, it says, in it are ten rights. Ten, they can, it contains ten rights. And it says, and this is the reason why the ayah was named, uh, and is well known, and is named the ten rights. And the first of those rights are the right of Allah, is the right of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we mentioned earlier. وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا Worship Allah and do not associate partners with Him. وبل, and then after that, وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And do good to parents. Show ihsan to your parents. Do good to parents. And he says, this is the second uh, right. So the doing good to parents is the second right, isn't it? Then after that, وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى And with your relatives, close relatives and your relatives. And the, the Sheikh will explain this further down. He says, this is the third right. And he says, those people who are close to you, they're the ones uh, who are your relatives, as in from your nasab, from, from your family, from your father's side and from your mother's side. For example, he says, like, um, uh, you know, um, you have your uncles, you have um, fathers, you have grandfathers, you have uncles, you have uh, aunties, uh, you have uncles from the paternal side, you have aunties from the paternal side, you have uncles from the maternal side, you have aunties from the maternal side, your brothers, your sisters, uh, you know, the children uh, of your uh, brothers, for example, your nephews, your nieces, etc. Uh, and likewise. We understand that. He says, and these are the people who are clusters, the uh, qurba or uh, qurba, uh, people of Qaraba, the closeness, as in relatives. These one described here. Then the Sheikh mentions the next uh, uh, um, haq in the in the ayah, which is the fourth one, wal yatama, and that means al aytam from the Muslimin. So the orphans of the Muslimin of the Muslims, the orphans, and so he explains what is an orphan because sometimes I think. Uh, a lot of people get confused and I think it's worth uh, mentioning here as previously I didn't uh, know this and uh, I, I didn't really know the definition of uh, orphan properly and I think it's quite popular with the, in our own Pakistani culture that uh, that we don't always get this right so it's worth knowing this so the Sheikh explains it anyway he says so he says orphans they are an orphan is one whose uh, parent or whose father sorry whose father uh, has passed away and he is young, i.e. he hasn't reached the age of puberty. So so as long as he hasn't raised, reached the age of puberty and his father's passed away, this person is classed in the Sharia as an orphan. 
as soon as he becomes um, a, a man, you know, puberty, he reaches puberty, then he's no longer classed as that in the Sharia. So it's always good to know this, these kind of uh, rulings here, uh, and quite beneficial. Um, and so then the Sheikh continues and he says, therefore, um, if uh, when we have a person who is an orphan, a child who is an orphan, hasn't reached puberty, then obviously he's in need, and therefore he's in need of somebody to uh, stand in the place of being his father. Even though he's not his father, he's in the same, he's in the posi a position, a very important position, and he's and he uh, takes place of his father, like his father, and so therefore he takes care of him. As he's a child, you know, up until he becomes a, a man and grows, and you know, spending upon him, and you know, raising him, and uh, making sure that you know he's benefiting him, and you know, and uh, protecting him, and you know, all these things. And the sheikh says because he doesn't have a father that can protect him, and to spend on him, and to defend him, etc. And he is in need of such. He's in need of somebody whom who can help him in these affairs in in his life and and the, because of him not having a father and maybe also be detached from family and so therefore he has a right in islam so then the shaykh continues we move on to the next paragraph and he says al muhimu an allah bada'aha bi haqqihi subhanahu wa ta'ala qawluhu wa la tushriku bihi shay'a lam yaqtasir على قوله واعبد الله لأن الإبادة لا تصح مع الشرك ولا تنفع ولا تسمى إبادة إلا إذا كانت خالصة لله عز وجل إن كان مع شرك فإنها لا تكون إبادة ولا تكون إبادة مهما أتعب الإنسان نفسه فيها قرن الأمر بالإبادة بالنهي عن الشرك وقرن ال وقرن الأمر بالإبادة بالنهي عن الشرك إذ لا تصح إذ لا تصح الإبادة مع وجود الشرك أبدا. So the Sheikh says, says so the point being, what's the important point being here? What the Sheikh is trying to convey to us, he says the point being that in this ayah, when Allah started with the rights, he mentioned his right first. Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentioned um, they do not associate partners with Allah in worship. Don't associate anything in worship with Allah. Nothing. Big or small. When we mentioned this uh, last uh, week, if you remember. Um, and this doesn't, it's not constrained and doesn't stop just with where we say, where, where it's mentioned, Wa'bud Allah, worship Allah. And uh, 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 rather, it's also that we have Tawheed, meaning that you worship, single out Allah with all worship, all forms of worship for Allah alone, uh, uh, purely for His sake, not mixing, so Khalis, purely for Him, not mixing your uh, your worship uh, with anything else, uh, and towards anything else, and also uh, that, that that's what Tawheed is, as we mentioned last week, you remember, it's not just worshipping only, but you have to make sure it's purely for the sake of Allah only. And you know, mixing with anything else because if you do that, then you have committed shirk, like here. Wala bihi shay'a. Don't commit shirk, yeah. So, wa'budullah, wala bihi shay'a. As we mentioned last week, if you remember, if we affirm, yeah, all worship for Allah and we negate all worship to other than Allah, there has to be in there. Remember the conditions of La ilaha illallah. And if you're attending uh, uh, one of the brother's lessons, brother Wasim. Then if you're not, then you should join his lesson. If you want his link, I will uh, send you the link. Just send me a message and you can join those lessons. He's covering um, the shurut or the conditions of La ilaha illallah where the uh, the book he's going through explains in a lot more detail. And if you don't know, you should attend that lesson. Um, it's on every Saturday at the moment uh, via Telegram. So it's, it, if anybody wants that, um, send me a message in the Telegram group. Um, um, uh, and I will uh, send you the link because it's worth knowing these things are very important understanding what la ilaha illallah actually means um, so okay let's continue so then the shirk he, he says so therefore in terms of shirk you know if, if your worship contains shirk and it's therefore it's not classed as being khalis or purely for Allah then it's not accepted you committed shirk al-akbar and all your actions are nullified as we mentioned last week you remember so we have to be very careful and so uh, the Sheikh mentions here 
Therefore, it says the, the affair or the command um, is linked with in ibadah, worship is linked, or what the worship is linked um, with um, uh, worshiping Allah alone. Yeah, affirming his worship, all worship for him alone, and making sure that you don't commit shirk when you're com when you are acting out your worship is not mixed with any anything else or towards anybody else other than Allah. So therefore, if that happens, if it happens, then your worship is incorrect and corrupted, and it's not accepted. Yeah, so you cannot have shirk in there. So the Sheikh continues and he says. هذا دليل على قول الشيخ أعظم ما أمر الله به التوحيد حيث إن الله بدأ به في آيات في آيات كثيرة منها هذه الآية ومنها قوله تعالى وقضى ربك أن لا تعبدوا إلا إياه سورة الإسراء verse 23 فبدأ سبحانه وتعالى بالتوحيد وهذا يدل على أنه أعظم ما أنه أعظم ما أمر الله به قل تعالوا أتلوا ما حرم ربكم عليكم أن لا تشركوا به شيئا وبالوالدين إحسانا ولا تقتلوا أولادكم من إملاق سورة الأنام verse 151 so let's stop there because that's a new paragraph starts after that so um, the sheikh says so he says this is the evidence of what the sheikh is has mentioned that the greatest command that has been commanded by Allah is a tawheed from where from where Allah began and he began from that he began he began his speech with with that from where we saw in the ayah in various ayahs you see this we've already seen a few examples we'll see some more inshallah in uh, Sheikh says as we n come across many many ayahs like this and he says and from these ayahs is this ayah from uh, Allah's speech, Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ Surah Al-Isra. So let's go to Surah Al-Isra and see what that means. And your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him. See? So it's the same thing. And then another ayah is mentioned further down with regards to what, uh, uh, with regards to Tawheed again. Uh, from Surah to See here at the bottom of the page, starting over the next page, verse 150, uh, verse 151 of Surah Al-An'am. Let's go there. Say, O Muhammad wasallam, come, I will recite what your Lord has prohibited you from. Join not anything in worship with him. Be good and dutiful to your parents. Kill not your children because of poverty. We provide sustenance for you and for them towards the end of the ayah. Yeah. So you can see there. In the order of these things that are mentioned, and we see this uh, repeatedly, Allah mentioned this in the Quran. So we know its importance from there. It's, it's clear for us the importance of Tawheed always comes first. And so, if you continue, then the Sheikh says, "Hada dalilun ala ma yati an aadham ma naha Allah anhu shirk. Fa ida kana aadham ma amar Allah bihi al Tawheed." فإنه يجب أن يبدأ الإنسان بتعلم العقيدة قبل كل شيء. العقيدة هي الأساس، فيجب أن يبدأ بها بتعلم والتعليم وأن يداوم على تدريسها وبيانها للناس، لأنها هي أعظم ما أمر الله به. فليس من المناسب، فليس من المناسب أن تجعلها آخر الأشياء أو آخر الأشياء. أو لا يؤبه بها لأن الآن هناك دعاة يزهدون في تعليم التوحيد والعقيدة هناك أناس ابتلوا بهذا ولأن الإخلال بها إخلال بالدين كله فيجب العناية بها. So the Sheikh he says so he says this um, is the evidence that that uh, where the evidence that the greatest um, thing that we've been commanded with is is a tawheed, and the greatest thing that we've been prohibited from is a shirk, the opposite of a tawheed. So he says. So the sheikh says. So if let's now say we know this now, we've learned this, we've wondered, we've comprehended it. Um, let's say 
if now we know that the greatest thing that Allah commanded for it was Tawheed, for then it only log makes logical sense that it's it's obligatory that we be that the person begins with learning the aqidah before everything else. And he says that because the our aqidah or our creed and our belief it is the foundation. So therefore it's obligatory that we begin with it by you know by learning it and teaching it. So you learn it, you understand it and then you teach it. And that we continue upon teaching it and clarifying it to the people once we understand it. Because it is the great as we've established now, it is the greatest thing that Allah commanded. So it's not appropriate that we make it the last thing or from the last of the things that we might learn or not, you know, not bothering learning it, leaving it to the side. It says because now there are, there are callers, people who are teaching the deen and calling to, to the deen and it's the last thing they mention. They stay far away from mentioning Tawheed and the correct Aqidah, the correct creed and the belief. And so because of them, Many people are tested with this. They're tested by this. Because, because then the Shaykh, the last line he mentions that because without it or you're, you're nullifying it or just not bothering learning it and leaving it out is leaving out the deen itself, all of it. Because without a foundation, you're going nowhere. And we all can use the same example that we can use an example that we all can relate to. A building with poor foundations at some point it's just going to come crashing down and um uh, and the worst case scenario is that if, just, if somebody's in there they, they'll die so you can imagine that that you want we need to have a solid foundation five pillars of islam we're not going to jump the first one and go to the second and start praying and saying okay better check out how to pray properly gotta make sure i pray properly i do this i do that no what's the point if you are committing shirk or if you are uh, on a, a very uh, uh, weak foundation you're going to fall into many errors and it, you think about it as well as in if you fall into those errors as we learned uh, early on in the book that it's not appropriate it's not allowed it's not permissible that uh, um, that we are ignorant of what we need to know as Muslims and one of those things is knowing the correct aqidah the creed, knowing what Tawheed is, knowing what Shirk is. We can't just say, oh, well, I didn't know that and nobody taught me and okay, I'm okay now. No, we have to learn these things. We have to learn them. It's a must, as we already mentioned before. Remember the Sheikh, he mentioned this to us before, so it's very, very important. And so if the foundation is correct and solid and firm, then everything else that comes after it will remain upright. And that's the most important thing. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, um, Whatever Tawheedun ففسروا التوحيد بالإبادة إذا فالتوحيد هو إفراد الله بالإبادة وليس هو الإقرار بأن الله هو الخالق الرازق المحي المميت المدبر لأن هذا موجود في الفطر We'll just stop there for a second So the Sheikh says So he says So what is Tawheed then? What is Tawheed? He says Is it that we affirm and confirm that Allah is the creator, is the provider, is the giver of life, is the one who uh, gives death and takes people away. He says no. The Sheikh says no. He says at Tawheed, it is singling out Allah with all worship. Because Allah said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ In uh, Surah al uh, verse 56, and we mentioned this ayah last lesson, I believe, and even before then, and maybe in some other lessons before in other books, but let's have a quick recap. Uh, the ayah meaning that Allah says that I did not create jinn of mankind but to worship me. 
That's the primary purpose we were created for. To worship Allah. Right? And then the Shaykh gives an extra benefit here and he says, uh, the people of uh, Tafsir, the Mufassirin, the people of uh, Quranic exegesis who explained the Quran, they said that worship, ya'budun, worshipping, worship, it means, they said, i.e., yuwahidun. So they said that worshipping is yuwahidun, meaning singling out Allah in worship, singling out Allah in worship, worshipping Him alone. As, as we mentioned before. And so he says, they explain that at tawheed uh, is, uh, uh, with what is worship, tawheed al ibadah. So uh, we'll get, more, we'll get more, more details as we go through. So then the Shaykh says, he says, therefore, he says, at tawheed, at tawheed, it is a singling out Allah with all worship, with all forms of worship, all of it for Allah alone. And it is not affirming that Allah is. Uh, the creator, the provider, the giver of life, the one who takes life away, the one who takes care of the affairs of the world, of the universe, Al-Mudabbir. He says, هذا موجود في الفطر. He says, because this, this, knowing this, it's already in, it's a natural, uh, it's a natural, it's a natural thing. It's inside us. We already know that we're created with that, the natural dis, uh, disposition of knowing that Allah takes care of all these affairs. He's the Rabb. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, وَهَذَا He says, مَوْجُودٌ فِي الْفِتْرِ مَوْجُودٌ فِي أُقُولِ لُقَالَى لَا يُوجَدْ عَاقِلٌ لَا يُوجَدْ لَا يُوجَدْ وَعَاقِلٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا يَأْتَقِدُ أَنَّ أَحَدًا خُلِقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَأَحَدًا خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى لَا يُوجَدُ أَحَدٌ فِي الْعَالَمِ كُلِّهِ وَمَا فِيهِ مِنَ الْكُفَارِ وَالْمَلَاحِدَى يَأْتَقِدُ أن أحدا من البشر خلق بشرا ولا إن سألتهم وإن ولا إن سألتهم من خلقهم ليقول إن الله لا يوجد عقل في العالم يعتقد أن أن بشرا يخلق بشرا إنسانا يمشي على الأرض ويتكلم ويأكل ويشرب هل يوجد عقل يعتقد هذا أم خلقوا من غير شيء أم هم الخالقون أم خلق السماوات والأرض بل لا يقنون توحيد الربوبية موجود في الفطر والوقول لكنه لا يكفي بدون بدون توحيد الإبادة وهو إفراد الله بالإبادة. So then the Sheikh continues and he says um, with regards to um, what we mentioned just then before trans, uh, before I started reading the Arabic again he says that there isn't a person an intelligent person with true intelligence. This we're talking about true intelligence. Uh, there isn't a person with true intelligence yeah, that would that would believe yeah that that uh, that there isn't a rub a lord that created everything yeah and there, you won't find a person with true and proper intact intelligence that will say that oh uh, a human created everything and created all the other humans and and of these kinds of examples. He says you won't find this in the world, all of it, talking about a proper person with proper intelligence. Obviously, there's plenty of fools around, as we know, they say all sorts of things, whether they lie or whether they say other things, or whether they truly believe it, but there's not true, proper intelligence. Uh, and he says you won't find this from even the kuffar, the disbelievers, or the um, uh, the atheists, you know, believing this, that, that uh, was believing that a human created other humans. So then the sheikh mentions a few ayahs here, so let's go through them. The first one the Sheikh brings is from Surah Zuhruf. So let's go there. Verse 43. Let's read that. And if you ask them who created them, they will surely say Allah. How then are they turned away from the worship of Allah who created them? Yeah. Then the next ayah that's mentioned is uh, a couple of ayahs from Surah Tur. So let's go there. Surah Tur. Tur. Verse 35 and 36. Were they created by nothing or were they themselves the creators? Or did they create the heavens and the earth? Nay, but they have no firm belief. So the Sheikh brings evidences there that clarify that. And so he says, At-Tawheed al this At-Tawheed al meaning as we mentioned before, but as a reminder, Tawheed al is where it's a Tawheed of Lordship. So, you know, you believe in a Lord, 
um, who is a provider, who takes care of the affairs of the universe, who gives life, you know, uh, you know, brings about death, uh, etc. Um, so the Sheikh mentioned that this is in the natural disposition of the creation. However, it's not sufficient without a Tawheed al-Ibadah, i.e. a Tawheed al-Uluhiyah. So what we mentioned, Tawheed, as in singling out Allah in all worship, that's Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, also known as Tawheed al-Ibadah. And so a Tawheed al-Rububiyah, the Tawheed of Lordship, if you just have that only, and you believe in that only, and not the Tawheed of Ibadah, as in what we're discussing today, as in worship and singling out Allah in all worship, purely for Him, etc., then this person, uh, is, you can liken to the examples of the Mushrikun of uh, Mecca, uh, even people from today, they believe in the Lord, or they say, yeah, we believe in the Lord, but they don't actually worship uh, Allah alone according to what Allah commanded them with, then these people end up in the hellfire, even though they still believe in the Lord, but they did not believe in Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, you know, so you see, so the Sheikh mentions that, and he continues, so let's continue. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ الشَّيْخَ التَّوْحِيدُ هُوَ إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْإِبَادَةِ وَلَيْسَ هُوَ إِفْرَادُ اللَّهِ بِالْخَلْقِ وَالْرِزْقِ وَالْإِحْيَاءِ وَالْإِمَاتَةِ لِأَنَّ هَذَا الشَّيْءٌ لِأَنَّ هَذَا شَيْءٌ مَعْرُوفٌ وَلَا يَكْفِي تَوْحِيدُ الرُّبُوبِيَةِ فِي تَعْرِيفِ التَّوْحِيدِ So that's just uh, what the Sheikh mentioned. That's what we just mentioned before I um, uh, start reading Arabic again. So let's continue. قَوْلُهُ رَحْمَهُ اللَّهُ وَعَذَمْ مَا نَحَى اللَّهُ عَنِ الشِّرْكِ so what we'll do is, we'll uh, stop here because the next chapter um, is the opposite, opposite of what we discussed today, which is um, the greatest thing that Allah um, uh, uh, prohibited us from is a shirk, which is opposite of Tawheed. Uh, so uh, I think it'll be a good time to stop here, inshallah, and um, we'll take a break from this just to ponder over what we've learned today. And then we can come back and look at the opposite of it, which is shirk. Uh, and, and I think that'll be a, a, a better approach for us, inshallah, all of us. Uh, but if anybody wants to attend the other lessons that happen on Saturdays every week, um, on a Saturday evening, um, send me a message. I will send you a link. Um, and you can drop a comment on the group. If you don't have my number, then you can just message. I'll post a link there. You can join the brothers uh, group and uh, benefit from uh, the lessons of the conditions of La ilaha illallah, which is very important. Every Muslim, we need, need to know this. We need to know it in detail and properly, with proper understanding. So let me know, inshallah, in the group. <clears throat> so we'll stop there, inshallah, and I'll see you guys uh, next week, um, probably around 8.15, uh, because the Isha time is uh, is getting later now. So I think 8.15 would be better than 8.30. So I will notify you anyway, inshallah. But we'll call it uh, 8.15 p.m. Uh, up until the end of March, inshallah. Inshallah, I'll see you next week. In light of Allah, Subhanakallah, wa bihamdi. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa tuhbilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.